Hi everyone, it's been a while. Um, I do apologise, I know I haven't got back to quite a few comments on some of my the previous videos. Uh, but thank you all for l looking at my videos, I really do appreciate it and commenting. Um, so today, I've got quite a cool watch on me. Um, just to let you know, all the watches that are on my channel, I actually own them. Um, and have owned them usually for quite some time. Uh, I usually, the thing with watches, I keep them. I like, I buy a lot of watches, it all depends on how they look. But I usually keep the ones, I keep the ones on the way they feel. So if I like the way a watch looks and how it feels, I'll keep it. Uh, but I am a bit of a hoarder as well, so that is quite something there. But I mean, uh, yeah, let's say I do need to get rid of a few watches in the collection. So anyway, today we've got the new Pelagos 39. And I thought I'll do a little review on it. Um, I've literally just picked it up from the store, so it still has stickers, etc. on it. Um, it's been sized, so my wrist is seven and a, about seven to seven and a quarter inches. So let me take the watch off for you to get a better look at it. Here we are. So as you can see, it has that sort of um, aged bezel. Uh, the lighting is not brilliant. Let me put some lights on. Hang on, hang on. That's better. So um, it was sunny all of a moment and all of a sudden it just went very overcast. So as you can see, um, yeah, it's a nice watch. It's definitely cool. You've got the kind of faux patin of the aged look on the bezel and then you do have a sunburst style but it's really not very noticeable i will take the watch outside um so then we can get a look of it outside to see what it looks like and also on the wrist outside not sure if you can see the red pelagos text there um just about probably so um just to explain again so I've got a seven to seven and a quarter inch wrist. Um, I'm gonna go through this watch today, but I'm also gonna do a comparison with some of its uh, bigger brothers. Notably, <clears throat> the Pelagos in blue. Oh, I very much like this piece. And also the original Pelagos two liner, the ETA movement, which is actually on uh, Erica's original uh, Marine National strap. Now, as my channel, it is impartial. I'm not sponsored by any of these watch brands. I'm a collector. I buy watches again on how they look and I keep them on how they feel, on how they are to wear, etc. And, you know, wrist. Wrist time is an expensive commodity. I've got to enjoy. I've got to enjoy it, what, enjoy it whilst I can. So, you know, uh, the watches I actually wear, are they're worn for a reason. Um, th the thing of me, I've got so many watches in the collection, and a lot of them don't get worn, which is actually, I'll be honest, it's a, it's a crime. Um, it's not good, but, you know, I do. I am looking to eventually sort of um, reduce the numbers. So, anyway, going back to the watch we have here in my hand, um, you can see it. So, like I said, the review is, I'm not here to beat around the bush or to kind of, um, I'm not sponsored by Tudor, so I'll be honest. It's a nice watch. It is a good watch, but it does have some flaws, um, which I'll go on to in a second. So starting with the strengths, I mean... It's titanium. It is very, very lightweight. The watch has had three links taken out. So what we can do, we can put it on a scale to see what it measures, um, what it weighs, sorry, uh, to give you an idea. Um, but it really is absolutely, it, it, 
it's like air. It literally feels like there's nothing there. Um, very unlike the other Pelagoses, which even though they're titanium, they have a bit of a heft to them. They've got a nice weight. There's a there's a solid kind of chunk feel to this watch, and it's strange. It's titanium, but it still has a nice weight for the size. It's it's just it's perfectly perfectly weighted because you can wear this day to day and you don't get fatigue um, with the old Pelagoses. Unlike, say, something like a Marine Master uh, 300, which it's nice wear, but you do sort of get a little bit of fatigue towards the end of the day. Um, I, I didn't when I was younger, but now approaching my late 30s, I sort of do. Um, but I'm going to put one of those. I've got a Marine Master on me today, and I'll put that on the scales. So here you go, there's more of a close up. It's actually better for you to have a look at it. All right, let's get on our scales. All right, so that so my battery for the scales actually died, so I just changed it. Now let's get the watch on the scales. So we'll start with a few watches I brought along today. First, so let's put the Pelagos on. So this has had three links removed, and for some reason it's on ounces. Let's change that to. grams 105 grams it's quite lightweight very very lightweight it really does feel like there's nothing on the wrist I'll put the blue Pelagos which I can't confirm how many links have been removed I can't remember now but it's got the full bracelet on there and it is titanium that's 141 grams Not a light watch, but not too heavy either. Wears nice. And then we've put the two liner. So this has got, uh, this hasn't got the bracelet on the steel. It's got a Erica's, Ori Erica's original Marie Nationale strap. And that's coming in at 98 grams. Very, very lightweight indeed. But for some reason, this actually feels heavier than the Pelagos 39 mil. Let me put that back on again. Oh no. It's definitely 104. The original Black Bay 58. Um, again, I can't remember how many links have been taken out of this one. It's coming in at 132 grams. I've got a Marine Master 300 here. However, this is fitted on a, what are those rubber strap, uh, Crafter Blue rubber strap, and it's got the original clasp as well. So this one comes in at 149 grams. Uh, but again, weight wise, it is literally all on the head with this watch. Bought a Seamaster. 41 along. I can't remember how many grams have been taken out. 159. Wow. It's probably 160. Okay. Doesn't feel like a heavy watch though. I think the weight is quite well split with this one. And then, last but not least, Seiko SBP. And that's coming in at 165. Again, really doesn't seem that heavy. And I can't confirm, this is the original bracelet, I can't confirm how many links have been taken out of that one. So as you can see, it's quite a lightweight watch, giving you a good idea um, in comparison to some other watches, so you can sort of get an idea of what it weighs. Um, it really is a feather. So if you like a really really light watch this would definitely be up your street if you like something with a bit of heft um, then perhaps it might feel a bit too light 
I think around the 140, 150 gram mark would probably be a nice sort of balance. Um, but at 104 grams, um, yeah, super, super light. But it's it's nice to have, I guess, in that way, it sort of disappears on your wrist. Um, again, it is also quite thin. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got my calipers with me to measure it. But it would definitely fit under the cuff of your your collar and your shirt um so in terms of comfort it's comfortable it is lightweight um it would disappear into your wrist if you're the kind of chap if you're kind of kind of guy sorry who would want to feel um a bit of wrist you might be a little bit a bit of watch with a bit of heft on your wrist you would be disappointed if i'm honest um and that will lead me on to some criticisms of the watch uh which i'll discuss in a moment so yeah it's lightweight in a way it's a good thing could be a bad thing for some um the bezel it's different um i mean obviously it's loomed which is definitely a major plus point it's a really really good thing about the pelagosses um that show that they are quite they are designed for diving or they are designed for kind of swimming um is the bezels and i love the fact that they're loomed um it, it makes the watch quite unique amongst most dive watches in that the bezel is fully loomed um now i'm not a massive fan of the kind of faux patina or the kind of aged look uh, i don't know why Tudor have done that they shouldn't read i mean yes it does look like an old submariner red um but really you didn't really need to make it look like that i mean a Pelagos is quite a modern watch. It's a new watch. They didn't really need to make the watch look old. Um, which is a bit strange. So I don't, I'm not really a massive fan of it. Uh, particularly when it comes in comparison to the matte black. Um, and in terms of legibility, this is... The old one is, is amazing. You can just see everything on there. And it doesn't really... I mean, this screams tool watch. Uh, whereas this one, it does and it does and it looks a bit different with that. Um, I'll put the I'll put the two liner on my wrist. Hang on. So here's a two liner on my wrist. Um, it's a big watch. It's not small, but I do I do like it. Um, it's got presence. It's what a tool watch should be, you know, just there um it's all matte doesn't scream or shout it just means business um it's a definitely i mean they're a nice they're a good i mean i do like the original two liners they are slightly thinner with the eta movement than the one with the in-house or kinesi movement whatever you want to say um not a massive amount but they are slightly thinner which is nice especially for wearability uh it is noticeable a little bit i would say um, but of course this is sitting on a strap which goes underneath it so that sort of negates that saving but however this is super light as you saw it's only 98 grams but it has a heft on it um, it feels it feels like a big watch um, again it's an ETA movement so cheap to service it's reliable can take a beating um, being it's a Tudor ETA it will be kind of a higher finish like an elaborate grade not the most reliable. I mean, in terms of timing, it's okay. It does need a service. Um, I bought it used. So it could do with a service quite soon. Again, you can sort of see the 3D. You can see the 3D chapter ring. Um, which is quite cool. Well, every Pelagos has this, apart from the new 39. Uh, which just adds a bit of detail. Adds some sort of interest to look at when you're looking at the watch. I do find, obviously having two lines in text, it, it is a little bit naked. Um, I mean, when you look at the five lines, five lines is too much. Two lines, probably not enough. Maybe three lines would have done all right. Three or four lines, uh, which the new 39 has four lines so they, they've done well with that in terms of the dial yeah it's definitely legible um 
the right amount of text, four lines is spot on. Um, and I do, I mean, the red text, yes, the red text is iconic for Rolexes, um, particularly the Submariner or the Sea Dweller. Uh, very, very highly collectible pieces. I think Tudor seem to have caught, I mean, obviously Tudor really spot a Rolex, uh, but it seems like they chuck red text on a lot of watches, um, from the Black Blay Chrono uh, Pandas to the Pelagos left-hand drive, or, sorry, not left-hand drive, left-hander, uh, to this one. I'm kind of think what else they might have put red text on. Um, maybe the marketing guys at Tudor think, hang on, if we put red text on, it's going to sell by the bucket loads. <laughs> Could be the case, um, but it seems like the punters suck it up. Um, but it's a nice touch to have. And I mean, obviously, red text is red text. It's very desirable, particularly on anything from the Rolex family. So uh, no complaints. And it, it's cool. It gives a nice contrast um, for this. Now, another good thing, obviously, with this watch is the clasp. Um, let me just uh, cover that. So the clasp, as you can see, um, it's got the quick adjustment on it. Not the same as, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it on other videos. It's a bit tricky to do it whilst on the videoing on a phone. Um, it's not exactly the same as the original Pelagos, which is just amazing. Uh, you can, as you can see, it just stretches with your wrist. Um, slightly disappointed it doesn't have this clasp. Well, I am disappointed, but the clasp they've, they've it's supplied with is a good clasp. So no complaints. I mean, it's one of those things. And obviously, um, it's not a cheap watch at three and a half grand, though. Um, it's definitely not a cheap watch, but it is what it is. But I can't complain. I mean, with the, the quick adjustment feature, is it's nice to have. It would be better if it was like the original Pelagos, but hey, you can't have it all. Now... Things like the 500 meters water resistance, I'm not too fussed about that. I'm never going to go more than, what, 10 meters deep. So <laughs> I'm not a professional diver by all means. I mean, swimming, it's fine. I don't really, I swim at surface level, do a bit of scuba diving. Would I go more than 20 or 30 meters deep? Probably I'd like to one day, but I'd have to go on a special course. Would I go over 100? No. Well, you'd need to be a proper diver and you need to get all your qualifications. To do that so i'm not too bothered 200 meters water resistance perfectly fine uh, it's all you really need 100 to 200 is fine um what else do i like yeah i like the knurling on the sorry I like the knurling on the chapter ring and on the crown that's very cool that's very old rolex it's got a lovely feel that's definitely nice the knurling is it's very tool like um, sign of quality that is I, I do like that now my criticisms of this watch um, does it feel like a true Pelagos no it doesn't am I being honest yes it is a cool watch it is it's a baby Pelagos it's not really it's like Diet Coke. It's not the full thing. Um, yes, it's got the red text and it's got, I mean, elements of the dial, but it doesn't really have that kind of, um, that, that tool vibe. That It does have the tool vibe, but it doesn't have the full macho kind of image. Or it doesn't have that kind of no-nonsense feel to it. feels a bit fragile compared to this. Um... Or the blue. But again, it depends on wrist size. If you've got a wrist seven inches or above, you can pull this off. Um, if you're around the six sort of mark or smaller, then yeah, the 39 mil is definitely up your street. For now, I would not be selling either of these. Um, I do like the way they wear. They do have... They do, they are big, they're not small watches. These are big, hefty things. But 
they are cool. Um, that's the only way I can put it. Especially this blue. This blue absolutely kicks on a hot day. On a summer's day, uh, this is something else. The blue. Let me give it a shake. Um, oops, it's been... Been lying around a bit. There you go. Um, yeah, the blue absolutely kicks. It'd be interesting to see if they bring a 39 mil in blue or a 39 GMT. Wow, that will definitely be interesting. Um, but the blue definitely attracts a lot of comments. A lot of people are interested. Like people ask me questions. I've had a lot of Submariner owners say, "Oh, is that a Tudor? That's nice." Da da da. Um, so yeah, people do ask questions about the blue. Um, it's a cool watch, definitely very very cool piece. But would I be selling these two? No, definitely not. If I was an existing Pelagos owner, would I be worried? Uh, no, I honestly wouldn't consider selling it. I'd try it on, have a look at the new one, uh, but I wouldn't really be selling it. The other interesting question is. As a Black Bay 58 owner, I'm sure a few owners are now querying, do I sell my 58 and get the new Pelagos? That's an interesting question. Um, personally, I wouldn't. I honestly think Tudor did an amazing job with the Black Bay 58. This is probably one of their best watches. If you were to purchase a Tudor, uh, you wanted to buy, purchase your first Tudor, I will honestly tell you, look at a 58, uh, either in the gilt dial or the blue, uh, whichever really you like. But in terms of proportion, size, weight, um, this is a class act. Tudor really did nail it with the 58. I mean, I've had so many watches, like I've had the, I even had the Black Bay Pro, lovely watch, really cool watch. But I thought to myself, hang on. I've got two 58s, and it really was, it was a tough decision. The 58 Pro is a cool piece. It's nice. It's awesome. It's got the GMT movement. But in terms of wearability and just the feel of quality, the feel of something worth more than what, more, well, more worth more than the sum of its parts, the 58 really does, um, does nail it. I mean, this is a, this is a good watch. If you were looking to purchase your first kind of automatic watch or you want to kind of experience an old sort of vintage Rolex but in a modern modern day watch, uh, the 58 really is highly recommended for me. Um, if I had a 58, well I have a 58, but if I was a fellow 58 owner and I was thinking about selling it or trading it um, for a Pelagos 39, I wouldn't. I mean, I would like to, I'd own the 39 Pelagos separately, but I wouldn't consider selling my 58 because I honestly think it's one of those watches that even if you did sell it, you'd probably end up buying another one uh, a, a, further down the line, whether in a year or two or a couple of years or whatever it is. I think it's one of those watches that probably you'd sell it, but you'd end up missing it just for how well it wears. Yeah, it's got these stupid rivets. Um, I don't really care about that. I mean, that's probably the only thing that, people detract it on when it comes to the reviews but once it's on your the faux rivets I mean once it's on your wrist no one really cares I don't care I don't notice it um, I just think it wears very very well um, it's just a feel it, it's a class act it just has a quality feel I mean the clasp yeah I would say the clasp obviously is it's a lovely clasp it's great it feels nice when you close it in comparison to the new Glide sort of lock features that a new one has, yes, that is a disadvantage. It, it could it be a deal breaker? It is and it isn't, but I still wouldn't sell my 58. Um, the watch is a good watch. It doesn't really do much wrong, to be honest. Um, so if you are thinking of selling your 58, try it on. Try the 39 on. Um, personally, I wouldn't be in a major rush to sell it to buy a 39. Um, but uh, check out the 39. Um, by all means. Now, what I'm going to do, obviously I have been talking for quite some time. We're going to go outside. 
I'm going to show you what it looks like in the sunlight and you can really see if there is a kind of sunburst style so bear with me okay here's the watch in the sunlight so you can see a faint faint edge of very very faint edge or sunburst but not really noticeable if anything the chapter ring more so so the bezel um, but really not bad nothing to worry too much about nothing that detracts from it uh, so you can see a wrist shot what it actually looks like in the flesh how it wears Um, an interesting one an interesting one is that the SBP also has a very similar effect if not the same effect on its uh, bezel literally identical almost identical very very close very very similar Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed my review. Um, feel free to drop me any questions, I will promise I'll try and reply as soon as I can. Uh, but yeah, thanks for looking and I hope this has helped you. And yeah, feel free to subscribe, thank you.